Hey, good morning, Steve. Oh, just a minute. I just got my earphones in. I didn't hear what you said. Yeah. <clears throat> Is it just you and, oh, no, I see six more. Yep, I was just saying, good morning. All right. Good morning, folks. Uh, it's 8.02. We'll just give it one more minute and then we'll get going.
Hey, Quinn, are you out there? I am. Hello. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Yeah, I didn't uh, didn't ask you ahead of time, but I, I threw you on the agenda to just uh, kind of welcome you to the SWG officially and maybe give you a second to chat about your new roles in TOC and what you're going to do with S SWG. Oh, yeah, sure. I can do that. Is that fair? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, um, looks like we've got uh, about 14, 15 people. I think we usually have about 20, but uh, let's kick it off this morning. Uh, I've, I think we've got a pretty light agenda. The, the plan for today was a, kind of one key thing, which was just reviewing with the group the slides that we put together and the plan for our KubeCon EU next week. And uh, we do have open space here today for other topics that, that folks wanted to cover. And we didn't get a, a presenter to, to talk about a project for this week, but you know, if you wanted to chat about something, feel free to go to the agenda and, and add your topics there. You can fill in uh, at the end of the time, or we, we can cut it short uh, today. The, the first thing that we <clears throat> that I threw on the agenda was I uh, wanted to get Quentin to, to kind of speak a little bit about his new role as a, a TOC member at the CNCF uh, and talk a little bit about uh, you know, what he wants to do here within the, the SWG. Uh, so let me kick it over to you, Quentin. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, some of you may or may not be aware, uh, I was asked to join the TOC uh, a couple of weeks ago now, which I accepted. Um, and one of the things they have asked me to do is help you guys get some clarity on what the TOC would like out of this group. I uh, understand that historically that's been a little challenging. It's been not entirely clear what the TOC wanted you guys to do. And I'm very new into all of this stuff, so please do uh, feel free to disagree or correct me along the way if any of the impressions I've gathered are not accurate or different from what the impressions in this group. Um, so yeah, my, <clears throat> my thinking, um, and this is still pretty formative, is to just uh, put a proposal together as to what I think would be uh, both useful and I think ideally relatively uncontentious initially just to get, a, get some groundwork laid um, that we can then build on top of. Uh, and I understand there are some more contentious areas uh, like recommending uh, storage approaches for cloud native, et cetera, which understandably there are many different individuals and companies with uh, ideas about that. And I understand that uh, some of those have created some stumbling blocks along the way for you guys. Um, so <clears throat> I'm here to help. Um, and uh, I have a draft proposal of what I think might be both useful and relatively uncontentious to start with. Um, and I'm hoping that that can lay the groundwork to build on uh, to some of the more ambitious goals. Cool. Great. Anybody, anybody have any questions or comments for Quentin? I actually have a request. I'm not that familiar with the people in this group. I know some of you, but not all of you. Um, <clears throat> would it be uh, too much to ask for to do a quick round table and have a quick intro of the sort of active members of the group? Yeah, that's great. Um, Alex, you want to kick it off? Sure. So, uh, hi, Quentin. You met yesterday, but um, yes. So, so my name is Alex Kirkhoff. I'm, I'm one of the founders and the CTO of Storage OS. Um, and we're building um, storage systems for Kubernetes and, and containerized environments. Cool. And are these mostly software-defined storage? It's, it's all software-defined storage, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Ardalan, can you enter yourself? So yeah, I'm Ardalan Kangarlu. I work for NetApp. And uh, I develop NetApp's integration with Kubernetes called Trident. Uh, and I continue working on that. Thank you. How about a Blaine Gardner? Um, hi, this is actually the first CNCF storage group meeting I've been able to attend uh, in person. I work for SUSE uh, on their Ceph product, and I've been getting involved with Rook, and um, I guess as Bassam would say, trying to make Rook awesome. <laughs> cool. 
How about Brad from Red Hat? You out there? Yep. Hey, I'm Brad. I, I work at Red Hat with the container storage team. We uh, do quite a bit of work upstream in Kubernetes with container storage enablement and then also on OpenShift. Caleb? All of the dynamics. Um, I'm just new to the group, looking to, to learn. Excellent. Uh, David. Hey, uh, David Von Thennen. I work for VMware. I uh, work a lot around the, uh, the CNCF ecosystem with uh, kind of like the, uh, the, the hosted projects within the CNCF. So, yep. Sorry, Thanks. I missed your last name there, David. Von Thennen. Okay, gotcha. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Deep? You, Deep, I think you unmuted and unmuted. It's okay if you don't want to introduce yourself. It's all good. Um, uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah. You hear me now? <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, this is Deep Debroy. Uh, I work for Docker. I'm the software engineer there and kind of focusing on some of the storage areas. <clears throat> Very cool. Thank you. John Strunk. Um, hey, I'm John Strunk. I uh, work for Red Hat on uh, Gluster. Cool. Matt Smith. Hi. Um, so I, I work for Dayterra, which is a startup in Elastic Block Storage. Uh, I mostly do OpenStack development, but also a bit of Kubernetes and Docker. All right. Thanks, Matt. Sad. Hey, I'm Saad. Uh, I'm tech lead of Kubernetes uh, storage here at Google. Thank you, Saad. Mr. Wong? Uh, Steve Wong. I've been active in storage on Mesos and Kubernetes for almost three years now. But I've recently moved into a general role at VMware that uh, encompasses the cloud provider, which would include storage, uh, networking, uh, compute, and other aspects. Thank you, Steve. Uh, T. Paul? Uh, yes, I'm T. Paul Lee. I, uh, I work with a few people on the iSCSI target library in the cloud space. And uh, we are working to add CS, CSI to the front end. And uh, we are wrapping up the back end with a few back, back end storages. And uh, in progress is we are doing the gateway protocol, uh, the protocol gateway for iSCSI. And we have, uh, we are in interested in seeing what this group is doing. Thank you. And what company are you with, Tipo? Oh, uh, we are not associated with any company. But okay, independent. Thank you. It's purely uh, open source. And Jane? Hi, I'm uh, Xing. I work for uh, Huawei on the Open SDS project, which is also an open source project on Lynx Foundation. Um, I am currently working with uh, Jing Xu from Google and also other folks from Six Storage to add snapshot support to CSI and also all that support entry in Kubernetes. Excellent. Thank you, Xing. Uh, and I'm, I'm Clint. Uh, I lead a, a team at VMware which does our upstream contributions to Kubernetes and cloud-native oriented projects and uh, founder of the, the Rexray project. Cool. <clears throat> Thanks very much for indulging me. <laughs> very useful to know where, where everyone's coming from and what their interests are. <clears throat> I, uh, I can introduce myself. Oh, oh yeah. sorry. sorry, Luis. I don't know how I skipped uh, <laughs> no problem. Uh, my name is Luis Pavon, and I work for a startup, a storage startup called Fortworks. Uh, we do container uh, storage uh, where we can deploy through a Kubernetes system. Um, I participate in CSCFTO uh, storage uh, a group here. I participate in, uh, upstream with Saad and Jing on Kubernetes CSI. Uh, and CSI projects. Cool. <clears throat> Lewis, some of that was cutting out, um, but uh, did you capture that, Quentin, at least from Portworx? I did, thank you, yeah. Okay. 
Excellent. Thanks, Louis. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. Thank you. We got it. Are, are there any uh, active contributors here uh, or, or active contributors that are generally considered part of the kind of core team here who are not present today? Um, ben oh, tends ahead. to attend these, right? Yeah, Ben Hinman tends to attend them. Uh, I think that Steve Watt tends to be one of our more vocal people that, that aren't all on the call today. Steve is from uh, Red Hat. Yeah, I know Steve well. Yeah. Uh, Eric Forget, he was on some of our planning calls uh, for the, the Cube session. He tends to be on. I'm just kind of like grooming the. Bassam. Uh, Bassam, yeah. Yeah, Bassam, I know well. Is uh, Mike Rubin involved here much? No, we haven't seen Mike pop on here. It's an odd hour for him, so but he uh, stays in touch through me. Okay. Um, Ken, cool. Ken, he would be another one. Um, Kieran Mova from OpenEBS wants to jump on. Yeah, I think that captures it pretty well, though. I'd say there's about you know fifteen to twenty, fifteen or so decently active, and then you know twenty or so more that just regularly attend. Yep. Thank you. That gives me a good background. Yeah. All right. Uh, anybody have any other intros or comments or anything? No? Okay. I think that that probably goes, you know, Quentin's intro goes pretty well into the next thing that we had on the agenda, which is talking about the advanced session at KubeCon. Uh, what we what we said, talked about on this call was trying to get a someone from the TOC to come and chat with us so that we could have a nice round table discussing you know the future of the uh, SWG and, and what the TOC wanted from us. I think Quinton's already gotten back some of that information because he's been working with them to you know agree on that. Uh, but we are going to have Alexis Richardson who's going to come join us at the conference during our advanced session. So we'll have you know not only Quinton as a TOC member but also Alexis who's been with you for a long time, giving us you know, some more guidance on, on what we're, we're thinking about. And I think that that's a, a pretty good time to come and you know, pepper them with, with questions. Um, and that's, that's pretty much what I wanted to say for the advanced session. Anybody have any comments or questions about it? Cool, anything from you on that, Quentin? Say again? Any, anything from you on the the advanced session or? I have um, some writing here, which is a proposal. I've, I've sort of passed it past some of you. I think, I guess some of the previous meetings I've been to have not included everyone. I don't know if those were like a splinter group specifically for the presentation or whether I missed something. Uh, but yeah, I, I floated the idea of what I think a useful first step would be. Um, and it seemed to be reasonably well received. Um, so I've actually, Pass that by the TOC, and that's been well received there too. So, I can put that down here in writing somewhere now. If someone can tell me where to put it, uh, it's just cut and paste out of an email, so <clears throat> I'll have to clean it up. Um, but at least we can all put it in front of us and and uh, decide whether we think it's a good idea. I put a link to the the meeting notes in the chat, and it's probably the okay. Let me do that. Um, See if I can do this. Um, when did that work? Oops. <laughs> okay, so the, the the formatting is not great, but um, hopefully we can read that. <clears throat> is anyone presenting the notes on this call? Not quite yet, but I can I can bring those up. Maybe we want to do that then. Okay. Sorry about the dodgy formatting, uh, <laughs> but hopefully we can clean it up into something useful. Um, and some of this overlaps with uh, what you've done in the past, um, and some of it is based on my take on. So I went through all the material that you guys had produced over time and spoke to a few of you in a couple of the previous meetings and spoke to the TOC. <clears throat> and as you're aware, I think some of them spoke to some of you guys as well and got some feedback. And so this is kind of an attempt to distill 
all of that wisdom uh, into a what I hope is a an achievable set of goals um, that will be useful uh, to the group and to the CNCF in general, uh, and which would be considered, you know, an interesting thing to produce by you guys, uh, which is, you know, equally important. So maybe everyone wants to just take a minute to read through that blue text there quickly, and uh, and then we can open it to comments or questions or whatever. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. I think this looks. I think this looks really good, Quentin. Thank you. Excellent. Um, so, just to be clear about the non-goals, so these are not non-goals forever. They're just non-goals for what I would term we can call this phase one. So, phase one, we tackle the goals, and we explicitly don't tackle the non-goals. Um, and then, at the end of phase one, we decide what the goals for next for the next phase are, and maybe those include what are currently labeled as non-goals. Um, so maybe actually we should make that explicit and say non-goals for phase one, just so that nobody gets confused. Because ultimately, I do think we need to um, come up with some kind of idea that that in a cloud-native environment, uh, you know, these things work well uh, or have more more pros than cons, and these other things tend not to work well. And I think most of us have intuition as to what those groups look like. Um, but until I think we have a common understanding of what's actually done in, in cloud native environments at the moment and what all the terminology means and how it relates to each other, I think it's difficult to have the discussions that are required in the non goals section. And my take on some of the stumbling blocks up to now have been that uh, we maybe tackled what are listed as non goals before we had a common understanding of the stuff listed under goals yet. Cool. So does anybody have questions, comments, disagreements? Uh, I realize there's a pretty substantial departure. So there was a group within this group that favored focusing on, on I think, the simpler aspects, volumes, um, and just focusing on that. Um, there was another group that thought the scope should be broader than that. <clears throat> um, and my personal opinion is that there's this overlap between any one of these things and any other one, um, such that it's actually quite difficult to start with the leaves of the tree and describe them in detail without, you know, knowing what the tree looks like yet. Um, so my proposal was to, to take a wider scope. Obviously, you know, one has to limit, one can't go into excruciating detail on all these areas up front because you'll end up with a 500 page document that nobody will read. Um, but uh, what I have in mind, and I don't know if any of you have read the serverless working groups uh, white paper that they published a few months ago. Um, and they, they took on a similar goal within serverless. Um, and that was quite successful. So I would actually recommend, I can try and pull out the link now, um, stick it in there, but, but I think that provides a pretty good um, example of a similar exercise done in a different um, domain that was very well received and, and fairly uncontentious, I believe. Yeah, Quinn, my, I guess a couple things here. Um, one is, is this broadening to, to all things storage? Has that been kind of ratified by the TOC that that's what they want us to do at this point? Um, they, I, I've, I've circulated it to them and um, I, you know, I haven't got an, a positive act from every single one of them, but all the ones I've got feedback from gave me an act. Um, and so I, ha I haven't seen any, 
um, uh, objections to that yet. Okay. And, and on the, you know, the depth, I, I think that, you know, we're kind of defining this as trying to go wide to be comprehensive for storage. Uh, and I, I think I, I agree with you there. What I'm concerned with is the, the depth. Like if we create a white paper, well, if, if we look at the serverless white paper, a lot of that territory was, was new, I feel. Uh, and so it made for interesting reading along the way because you're not covering things that have been you know, solidified over the last you know, 30 years of tech. Yeah. Uh, and, and in this case, when we're talking about storage, like the fundamentals of it, I think that whether it's block storage, key values, databases, like you know, a lot of that stuff's been covered in a bunch of different places. And so what, I, what I'd be worried about is, is creating a picture that defines too much of what's already out there or what, you know, tries to clarify too much of what's already on paper in other places. Like a history book. Yeah. 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 And I think it's fine to, you know, provide links to that material where it exists and where we think that we don't want to duplicate it. Um, but I, and I think even within all of these like buzzwords that I mentioned here, block stores, key value stores, et cetera. I mean, I think there are a couple of different dimensions to all of those. Um, there's distributed versus non-distributed, um, there's, you know, various different permutations and some of those are relatively recent. Um, and then they're also, you know, the, the different variants that exist out there today are, are sometimes built in different ways. Some things are built on top of uh, local block stores. Some things are built on top of distributed block stores. Some things are built on top of distributed file systems. Uh, and they're things like Fuse. I mean, there are a lot of way, places where the sort of classic layering of a storage system is not adhered to anymore for sometimes good reasons. Mm -hmm. So I think just clarifying all of that stuff, um, and maybe I didn't make it clear here that, that I think there's quite a lot uh, in each one of those areas um, <clears throat> in terms of, as I say, distributed versus non-distributed, enterprise versus uh, commodity hardware, you know, all of these different dimensions where uh, it would be worth at least having a paragraph or two on each of these saying, this is a, this is a thing. Um, it, it has these, this is why people do it because it has these strengths. Um, it has these drawbacks. This is, you know, how people mitigate some of those drawbacks, etc and just go through the list like that, just to explain why all these things exist and, and, uh, and how they relate to each other. Yeah, I, I think the, the challenge with that, you know, being technologists is just being and involved in this tech so deeply and passionate, just being objective as you're going through those different bits and pieces and how they work together and you know, the making the judgments or at least being clear about it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah and I'm, I'm sure there'll be some debate. And that's why I, I propose that we focus on on stuff that actually exists and stuff that is in use. Mm -hmm. um, and, <clears throat> and if there's any kind of debate as to how this should be or whether this is better or not, it, it boils down to, well, you know, who, who's doing this? Like, show us a case where this is done. And if there's a case where this is done, then let's say this, this is done in this case. Uh, and ideally give, you know, some reasons why whoever did it that way, did it that way. Um, yeah, I think the, the real value comes out of perhaps standardizing interfaces to these classes of storage or stateful services. And once you go get into implementation details, those could be endless in amount to vendor sales pitches and things. And it's potentially really treacherous to do that deep dive into these. I mean, I wouldn't be against having occasional sessions and presentations for those interested but kind of cross industry discussions going into deep dives of particular implementations just sounds like, you know, my mine can beat up yours or something. And I don't know how fruitful yeah. that is. We definitely want to avoid that. I, I agree. And just, just to kind of clarify in everyone's minds what I have here, and maybe we should put it explicitly. So the, the serverless document I believe is in the region of 30 pages long. Um, and so, you know, I can imagine if you take, let's say there are sort of 10 key concepts across all of these things. We're talking about a couple of pages about block stores and a couple of pages about key value stores. And, a, uh, and, and it's by no means going to be exhaustive and it's by no means going to be a deep dive into all the possible implementations of these things. Um, but it is hopefully going to clarify the terminology um, and clarify 
you know, to, to whatever extent one can do in, in that amount of space, how these things tie together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think an attempt to identify the commonality so that we could attempt to standardize an interface or maybe discover that we can't standardize because you also have to allow particular implementations to uh, differentiate themselves or, you know, expose unique features. Uh, but kind and of an evaluation And I think that's, that's useful information to say that there is a standard called X uh, and many vendors extend the standard, you know, right, to differentiate themselves. And common extensions include, you know, blah blah blah, snapshots or whatever it happens to be. Um, yes, I agree. I just want to dig out that link to the serverless paper that everybody wants, uh, and I'm having some operator problems here. Hold on one second. <laughs> you want to say something else? Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, we, you know, just, just when we tried to discuss this before, I think there were a variety of different things we, we wanted to cover, but there are probably um, architectural issues, you know, like centralized versus distributed and those sort of things. There's, there's a bunch of differentiators around um, sort of data plane and the, the actual data part, you know, is it, is it a block device? Is it an object store? Is it accessible over an API? Is it accessible via a system interface? Is it, is it a, a, a local file system? Is it a shared file system? Is it a distributed file system? Those sort of things. Um, and then there are the, the, the control plane type stuff. And that's where we come to the interfaces and, and how we get integration um, to the orchestrators and things like CSI and those sorts of things. Um, and we may, we may also want to discuss about how it's, how the different solutions or how the different options um, are provided. So perhaps, you know, differentiating between, you know, software options and, and hardware options. Um, and cloud options uh, and versus on-premise options, for example. Um, and also whether the solution can be managed by an orchestrator. So, you know, the, more, more and more there are lots of solutions, you know, like Rook, for example, where it's a software solution and it's being deployed and managed by an orchestrator. Um, and and, and that, that's probably worth pointing out as well. But I, I think if we cover those 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 areas, maybe maybe we need to kind of split up the topics and 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 get a couple of people to contribute sections or something. Yeah, I feel like the. I mean, you just went through a lot of stuff, and I think you know some of that is what we've been talking about along the way, and. You know, I feel like one of the most important things that we need to do when we start is that we narrow down the scope. And we figure out like who's the actual audience and, and how deep is going to go because from a cloud native perspective, you know, if, if I'm just looking at the public clouds, right, they provide all these different data services, yet I have no idea how they're operated and maybe I shouldn't care. Uh, I have no idea, you know, they, they tell me what the availability is, but I really don't know the details of how that happens behind the scenes and maybe that's just enough information, you know, from that consumer's perspective, they've got a service that does XYZ data service and the availability, and it provides this certain functionality to support its application, and that may be the level of information they care about. You know, if you're lower down on the stack and you're thinking about running these data services yourselves in your own cloud, then you may have different concerns about, you know, what to consider and, and how to actually build and operate these things. So it's like just different audiences, and I think capturing both in one white paper is going to be difficult so at least figuring out who that audience is for this white paper will be important. I mean, if, if we if we stick to to um, sort of three main categories of information, then one is the control plane. How how are you going to request an interface and you know um, uh, orchestrate the storage? And then the second part being the data plane, which is how you access it. And you can access it via block and file and object and various other things and databases and key value stores and whatever else. Um, and then the third bit is, 
you know, where it's available. So is it is it on premise? Is it in in the cloud? Is it a cloud only offering? Is it software? Is it hardware? Whatever. And and if we stick to those, th those are probably less contentious. And then you know, if we want to go any further, we can talk about we can talk about a fourth category, which is architectures and stuff like that. You know, and have the have the pros and cons of centralized versus decentralized versus distributed and whatever else, and you know, talk about um, latency and access models and things like that. But that could easily be like a phase two thing. But if we if we talk, if we talk about those those top three, so how you interface and the control plane, how you get to the data and the data plane, and how the how the storage solution is made available, whether it's you know software, hardware, on premise, or cloud service. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a like a very good starting point to me, and um, I mean I can imagine we may want to add to that. So I mentioned in uh, one of the uh, the last item on the goals there is to compare and contrast um, to take take a fundamental set of properties of storage availability, scalability, consistency, durability, performance, um, and without referring to you know specific implementations, uh, but certain certain approaches are fundamentally, um, you know, higher performance and lower availability, for example, um, or uh, less scalable, but more consistent or, or whatever the case may be. Um, that, I think that could be a subsequent step. I, I think what you sketched out as a first bunch of steps is, is a very good one. And we, we may call it a day at that point and say we reduced the scope of phase one and we produced something useful and we left out, you know, goals three and four or whatever that case may be. And we're going to tackle those as phase two. Sounds like a plan. Yep. So it sounds like uh, after QCon, we'll, we'll kick off. I mean, what do you think, Quentin? Do you think we want to make the, the biweekly call, the, the working group for the, the white paper, or, or do we want to you know, set up a separate working group on that? I'm, I'm open to suggestions. Uh, I mean, in my mind, I've got that this is maybe a, like a three month exercise, but you know, if you guys think differently, uh, let me know. Um, and what I have in my mind is, is maybe a small number of what we'll just call them primary authors, the, let's say two next to throttle to make sure that this document gets done in three months. Um, and they would be uh, kind of responsible for putting the framework together. So let's decide what the first step is in the next three weeks, we're going to try and define, you know, the following terms uh, and we're going to put them in the document uh, and we're going to review them and, you know, come to conclusion. And then we're going to, you know, carry on from there. And then as many, and, and maybe, maybe a step in the process is to break it up. Once we've, you know, taken a first pass at what the structure of the information looks like, we perhaps carve it up and say, right, this block store expert goes and writes two pages on block stores and explains to us, you know, pros, cons, uh, whatever, whatever we decide is important there and they can fill in all the meat there and then bring it back to the, to the main doc for inclusion and uh, review. Does that, does that sound like a reasonable approach? Mm -hmm. Yep. And does, does sort of three months to produce a 30 page document? I mean, it might be a little optimistic given people's time availability and KubeCon in between, but uh, let's say we're, we start in May, May, June, like end of July. Does think, that sound I think it'd be great to, to target for possibly the next KubeCon? Um, I think that might be six months as like a little bit further out, but that seems like the next big event that they would probably want to make sure that they have something by. Yeah, I mean, perhaps a draft in three months where this group at least is, you know, fairly comfortable and maybe working through the final comments and then you know, send it to the TOC and have it actually published officially and ratified by the following KubeCon. That sounds reasonable to me. Mm -hmm. How about a comment from anyone else on the call? Uh, you know, how we use the, the SWG time in the, in the next few months? Um, because we've been doing presentations from the community about different storage related projects. And 
I've, I've enjoyed that. Um, but if, if others want to divert the time and just make it all about working on the paper, that's also an option too. Uh, how does anyone, how does everyone feel about, you know, the, the time spent in the SWG for the next few months? I think considering the goal of this group is now going to be focused on getting this white paper out, it would be useful to use this time to review uh, portions of the paper as they come in. Um, make sure there's agreement, discussion, that kind of thing. Okay. Do you still want to see presentations from the community about other things as well, like a combined agenda or just strictly white paper work? Probably a mix would. See, yeah, sorry, sorry, go ahead. I would love to see presentations from the community, especially if you are covering a broad spectrum of data store solutions. Uh, assuming the main purpose of the white paper is education, you know, uh, I think we can really talk about these technologies in a very abstract way, not referring to specific solutions. I think what derailed us last time was, uh, and got quite contentious, was basically turning the white paper into a cloud native landscape where we have logos and for different vendors and solutions and try to say why one is better than the other. I think we should probably avoid that as much as possible, focus mostly on technology. And even there, it can be quite contentious when somebody, if you prescribe, let's say, if you have to use a distributed file system instead of key value store or some other solution or NoSQL tool as, uh, for versus SQL or, you know, so we have to be quite careful about how we navigate this document. I, I, I agree, but you know, I think what Quinton clarified for us is that we're not about reducing scope or saying what is or what isn't cloud native. We're we're describing you know the terminology and um, the different categories of interfaces and the different categories of you know accessing your data and that sort of thing. And and I, and I think that should be uncontentious because it is a list of stuff, right? So, so it's not, it's not, this is better than that, the other thing. Yeah, I'm That's, fine with that. But yeah, as long as it's not turning into a cloud native landscape where we have logos of different products and solutions, I think this is a very valuable effort. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, uh, I just want to have a quick question. So have you guys been meeting once a month or more frequently than that up to now? Bi-weekly. Okay, so every two weeks. So I guess one, one approach might be to have a monthly presentation and the intermediate uh, bi-weekly meetings being work on this document. Just a thought. Mm -hmm. Or you could split each meeting in half and have you know one presentation and some work on the doc. Anybody feel strongly one way or another on that one? No, that seems reasonable to me. Yeah. What I would suggest, uh, just based on previous experience, is that the actual work on the doc hap happen not in those scheduled meetings, because otherwise you probably won't get anywhere. But, you know, people need to go out, and, and this is sort of these primary authors that I mentioned. There's, there's background work, you know, I think it's usually better to write these kind of documents in a quiet place when you can think clearly and put some thoughts on paper um, and then you know bring that back to the group for review yep. so uh, as a high level target um, I'm unsure what the next when the next uh, working group meeting is but should we maybe try to have like a very high level table of contents which we can discuss and then we can maybe pick a couple of authors um, or, or you know, people can self-nominate themselves for different areas to, to work together on, on actually fleshing out the sections. I, I mean, we do have KubeCon next week. Um, and so the, the next meeting we have will be the, the following week after KubeCon. Um, I don't know if that'll be a little ambitious to, to try to get everyone to sign up and start coordinating schedules with that big trip in the middle of it. Um, I'm all for it if that's what you guys want to do, but I think realistically, like, there's probably going to be more participants if we start kicking this off after after KubeCon. Yeah, that's probably fair. 
Yeah, I agree. One approach might be to, um, for anyone who's interested in being the primary author, to go off and produce a kind of wireframe of what they think the outline of the document might look like, um, and perhaps have that in two weeks' time. Um, and then we can look at those things and, you know, maybe, and the, this is just a brainstorm, you know, don't put a name on them, just put them in front of people and say, you know, here's the four wireframes we've received. Uh, which one do we think we, we would like to align ourselves behind? And, uh, and that, that person becomes the primary author. And then we flesh out that, that one further. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So your proposal there, Clinton, is to just, you know, if you want to be a primary author on this or, or involved as an author to wireframe it up and then, you know, bring it, bring it back to the group and we'll see which one is the right structure and go from there. Exactly. And, and, you know, hopefully it won't be terribly contentious and I'm sure some of them will look similar, uh, assuming that people have kind of digested what I put on writing here and hopefully I haven't left out too much, but, you know, ultimately, something in the region of a 30 page document, have a look at the serverless white paper. If you want to get a flavor of the level of detail and the kinds of headings and things. Um, and then with a bit of luck, we'll end up with a few of those that look not too different from each other. I mean, if they do look very different and we have two camps of people who line up behind very different documents, we will you know, have to resolve that. But hopefully I, I would assume that is unlikely to happen. Uh -huh. If this blue text in front of us is, is, I mean, it seems to be reasonably well received by this group. So, uh -huh. sounds good to me. Yep. Anybody have any further comments about that? No, that, that sounds like a good plan. Um, I'll, I'll self nominate and I'll put a wireframe together. Um, and hopefully, there'll be a few others that we can compare against. Okay. Great stuff. Okay. Um, so let's move on to the next thing on the agenda here. Uh, I put links into the, the uh, agenda under the KubeCon EU under the intro session. So we did have that uh, subgroup that, that formed and uh, you know, thank you for Alex for actually putting together the slides that we now have. Uh, there's one, the first link is the meeting notes where we just captured some of the ideas. And then the second is the actual slides uh, that we're going to be using for the, the KubeCon intro session. Uh, did anyone want to, like, is the group interested in, in seeing these slides or chatting about them? Uh, or, or, or Alex, did you want to run through them? What, what do you guys think? Is there anything, um, is there anything left to be decided for the session? Uh, I had to cut out a little early of the last meeting, so I didn't, I didn't hear the conclusions yet. I think the main thing that needs to be decided is um, who's actually on the panel and who's actually going to be there. Uh, un unfortunately, um, some of these come up and I'm not going to actually be able to travel next week. So um, I'm not going to be able to, uh, to, to present this or, or be involved, unfortunately. But we need, we need some volunteers to actually be able to go through this. Okay. I will definitely volunteer to to deliver any portion of this that uh, that we need. Um, who else is going to be there? Who wants to play a part in the session? I'll be there. Okay, Bob. Anybody else interested? Yeah, I'll be there as well. Part of Yep. Okay. Anybody else? Could you could you write your your names and the on the um, yep second slide? So it sounds like me, Saad, and Ardalan. Yeah, I might be tentative. I'm going to have to look at my schedule for possible conflicts. So not a hundred percent sure yet. Okay. I'm happy to help out if you guys want me or sit in the sidelines. Either way, I'm happy. <laughs> I will be at KubeCon Europe. This is Quentin, sorry. Yep. Okay. All right. So maybe the, so it sounds like we got, you know, three to four 
you know, folks that, that can play a part in the session. Uh, do you guys want to uh, sync up later this week separately, or do we want to spend the next 10 minutes and just kind of nail down, you know, what pieces of, of this presentation that, uh, that we can do or what you guys want to do here? Might as well use this time. Okay. Anybody else have any, any objections to that? Is there anything else that, that you guys wanted to cover for the rest of the day? All right, so let's use the rest of the time for, for finishing off this deck and making sure we're clear on, on what we're gonna do. I know that, uh, so Ardalan and Saad, you guys were both on the, um, the planning calls. Steve, I don't, I don't think that you were. Um, no. What, is there any portion of this deck that, uh, that Ardalan that you're more comfortable with or Saad that you're more comfortable with that you wanted to cover? Um, I can probably do the introduction of what the storage group is and uh, maybe the next couple of slides, uh, why storage is critical and uh, what the goal of the CNCF for storage is and what this group is about. I don't know, maybe a couple of those slides. Okay. Okay, so we go from a, the section of, hey, what is, what is storage? What's, what's a working group? And then we go straight to uh, projects and architecture. And then there's patterns. Um, Ardalan, it sounds like Saad, maybe like slides, what, like three to, to six are kind of grouped together. Yeah. Does that sound right? Yeah. No, that sounds good to me. <clears throat> Excuse okay. me. And what were the patterns? Okay, so slide, that's uh, eight to, what, eight to 10? Um, patterns are 10 to 12, but I'll be happy to, I'm flexible, I can copy that's that. Fine. Yeah, that's fine. If you want to do 10 to 12, that's, that's a okay. And then that leaves me covering uh, seven, eight, and nine. Sounds good. Let me just put, uh, okay. So actually I'm thinking, does it make sense to have multiple presenters or do just one presenter and then have a panel for a Q and A? I find that when you try to break it up into multiple presenters, it kind of just gets a little messy. And especially if you're switching back and forth, I'd be happy letting you do the present, the full presentation if you're okay with it, Clint. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> or I, I'm, I can volunteer. Don't no. want to put you on the spot. I love consensus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually agree with you, Saad. I mean, I think two presenters maybe with this one split in the middle is kind of doable, but, but four and jumping backwards and forwards gets uh, tricky. So, yeah, I would. If you want to sign me up, I'll do it. If you want to split, uh, that's fine with me too. So whatever the group thinks. Uh, I'd like to sign you up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is, is everybody okay with that or does anyone else want to sign up to do it? All right. Happy me. Okay. <laughs> I, think, I think that's a positive vote in your prison. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'll, I'll make sure that I, uh, I'm prepared to do this. So I'll deliver it. And then in terms of the panel. Uh, yeah, we could put that at the end and just say, here are some folks who've been involved with the group uh, and, you know, happy to answer any kind of questions. Okay. Now, I, I haven't been involved up to now, but this is the session listed as storage working group intro. Um, is yes. Is that the one we're talking about? Okay, so I just opened it on the Cubicon uh, schedule agenda, and maybe we have to get in touch and reform this then because it, it lists more or less a panel of Ben, Clint, and uh, Quinton right now. I'll, uh, I'll have this as my action. I'll reach out to them and update the, the description. And we'll make sure that you know, it's clear what, what people are going to see in the session and, and who's going to be in it.
Quentin, do you want to be on the panel for this? Uh, I'm happy to. Um, yeah, I mean, let's figure that out in the next couple of days. Uh, I'll speak to Ben. I mean, whether he wants both of us there or one of us there. Uh, it seems like at least one of us, one of the two of us should be there um, yep. to kind of create the right optics. Um, okay. And, um, and yeah, as you say, we can update the agenda. Those, those things were put together months ago, I think. So um, there's no shame in changing them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, the other thing it indicates is intro skill level. So probably assume we get users who have never heard of this or the topic. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Anything else? Uh, any other comments about the deck? Nope. All right. I think uh, in terms of the agenda, I think that we're, we're done. Uh, any other questions that people wanted to throw in here last minute? Nope. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, looking forward to seeing everybody out at, uh, at a KubeCon. And uh, you got about seven minutes back in your day. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Take care. Thanks, guys. Thanks, See you guys. Everyone.